Hello again and welcome to another FMOD and Unity tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at using a compressor within FMOD and how we can sidechain and duck other audio. Um, as you can see in Unity I've set up a little, well, <laughs> I've you know, attempted to set up a little first person game, a little demonstration as you can see by my amazing 3D modelling skills um, on how we can use this to balance our audio. Um, so I'm going to play this scene and I want you to just have a listen and see if you can work out what you think is wrong with the uh, audio. Um, so let's jump straight into it. Okay, so hopefully you noticed that while I was playing the scene and firing the gun with the left click of my mouse, you could barely hear the gunfire, you know, the music was so loud that it essentially masked the uh, gunshot. Uh, and even if you could hear the gunshot, a lot of the power and a lot of, you know, the, I guess, epicness of the shot, you know, was lost, you know, which is a shame because you want gunshots in your game to feel powerful and big and massive, you know, because then essentially it'll make the player feel big and strong and powerful and all that. So we're going to have a look at how we can control that within FMOD. So... But actually, before we jump into FMOD and have a look at that, in case anyone's interested, I'll quickly show you the scripts and stuff I've used to set up this scene. So to fire the gun, because all it is, the gun doesn't do anything, by the way. This is literally just a few cubes I whacked together. All that's happening here is when I click the left click on my mouse, it's playing the uh, an event I've set up in FMOD. So if we quickly open the script, you can see I'm using a public string that I've connected to an event instance on the void awake function, which we've done plenty of times before in other videos. What I've also done is set up a public key code and called it press me. Uh, over in Unity, I've chosen the uh, left click of the mouse button to be the key code. Um, and on the update function, I've said if input.getKey down brackets press me. So if the um, press me button, whatever that is, which I've selected, is pressed once, then the gun event, which is what I've called it, uh, starts and is played. So that's all there is to it. And as you can see, here's uh, the key code. I've just clicked mouse zero, which means left click. And I've chosen my event with the public string from FBOT. And then the music, for the music, I've just added an empty game object, called it audio source, and added the uh, FMOD Studio Event Emitter. And as I said, on object start, play music. Okay, so very simple stuff. Uh, because how you play the audio in Unity doesn't really matter too much, you know, a lot of this, this is going to be quite a heavy FMOD tutorial. Um, more specifically, like I said, a heavy compression tutorial. We're going to be looking at how we use FMOD's uh, compressor. Um, so add the audio however you want, it should still work, you know. So let's jump into FMOD. Okay, so I've got two events set up. I've got my music event, which is playing the music, and a handgun event. Both, I think, are just 2D events, which I've put together to play the audio. Uh, first we're going to do is look at FMOD's compressor. So if I go to the uh, music, I'm going to click add effect, I'm going to click compressor. So let's quickly talk about the compressor. Uh, if those of you, you know, if there's some of you out there who are familiar with how compression works. So what it does, what compressor does, it basically reduces or rather controls the dynamic range of an audio file. So louder parts of the audio file will be reduced and quieter parts will be increased. Um, what the threshold does is basically set a point at which the compressor activates. If I set the threshold to minus 10 dB, then the compressor will do nothing unless the audio is higher than minus 10 dB, okay? And obviously if I reduce that, then the um, compressor will then act in this case at minus 32 and whatever, you know, so on and so forth, it depends. Okay, so that's what the threshold does. It determines when the uh, compressor will be activated, depending on the level of the audio. The ratio um, controls how much gain control or gain reduction you'll be applying. So let's say, for example, this audio file um, reached minus 5 dB, okay? So that's above our threshold, so the compressor's then going to activate. And then depending on how high our ratio is, that minus 5 will then be reduced. So say if I left it at um, 1 to 2.5, that might be reduced by, say, I don't know, a decibel, for example. It probably won't be. It's, that's not accurate. This is just an example. So let's say at this point it will be reduced by a decibel. So then it will go down to minus 6 dB. 
However, if I increase it, now it might reduce by, say, a few decibels. So maybe now it'll go down to minus 8 dB, okay? So the ratio is how much uh, volume will be reduced or increased, you know, depending. Attack and release. So these two... Um, uh, basically, they are in milliseconds, and they control how quickly the compressor takes effect. So, once the audio reaches the threshold and crosses it and goes above minus 10 dB, the compressor won't act straight away unless I bring the attack all the way down and put it to, you know, as low as I can. So, in this case, 0 0.1 milliseconds. If I increase the attack, it's going to take a lot longer for the compressor to, you know, activate. So after 420 milliseconds of the audio being above the threshold, uh, the compressor will then kick in and then reduce it. And the same with the release except the other way around. So after being, uh, say, 200 milliseconds below the threshold, uh, the compressor will release and turn off and stop reducing the audio. And then finally, the gain just is a last-minute volume control, essentially. You can reduce some volume if the compressor is then too loud, or add some if it's then too quiet. Um, the compressor, obviously, isn't a way of increasing volume or decreasing volume. It's a way of controlling it. So instead of the volume of an audio file going up and down constantly, it will, say, be a bit more, um, well, controlled. So it might, instead of, like I said, going up and down, it might be just sitting uh, in between, say, 12 and 24 dB. And then maybe if that's not loud enough for you, you will, you will then increase the gain, okay? So that's compression in a nutshell, and you can do this to balance your audio once imported into FMOD. If, for example, you know, you're not quite happy with it and don't have the time to go back to your door, okay? So as I've set it up here, just by adding the uh, compressor to the music, uh, the threshold is, or the compressor rather, is measure, measuring the audio level of the music. So when the music uh, goes over the threshold of minus 10, the compressor will then kick in. However, for side shading and ducking, this isn't what we want. We want the threshold to be, or we want the compressor to monitor the level of some other audio file to then reduce the music. So in our case, we want it to measure the level of the handgun. Um, so I'm going to show you two ways of how we can do this. First, it's going to be within one single event, um, which isn't what we want for the example, but you know you might want to use this. And another way is using buses, which we looked at last time, which you know will be more applicable to our example because we're using more than one event. So let's start within the event. Let's add another audio track. I'm going to go to my audio bin by hitting Command-3, and I'm going to drag in, let's say, the handgun sound. Close that. I'm going to drag it over here so it plays quite quickly. And I'm going to hit Command C and Command V just to copy it over a few times. So now we've got three handgun sounds within the same event. So let's go back to Audio One. We're going to want to turn side chaining on. Go back to Audio Two where the handgun's being played, and we then want to hit this plus, add side chain on compressor on or rather side chain on the compressor on Audio One, which is here. And now we've set up a side chain. Uh, so I'm now going to set the uh, compressor levels quite extreme so we can hear the effects. So I'm going to reduce the uh, threshold all the way down, really increase the ratio, quick attack so it happens straight away, uh, and I think we'll leave the rest, okay? So we'll just leave it like that. So now I'm going to play the music with that um, handgun sounds, and we're going to see the effect of the compressor. So now you can hear it's quite obvious that when the handgun sound is played, whenever the handgun audio reaches above the threshold of minus um, 53, the music is reduced in volume because that's how I've set the compressor, okay? So that's the kind of effect we want, but like I said, we don't want it set up in a single event. We want it to work over um, two events in our case. Um, yeah, I think that's everything for the single event. Uh, yeah, okay, so let's just quickly get rid of this. We don't want that anymore. Um, obviously, the settings I've set here on this compressor are quite extreme. This isn't something you want to do, you know, as carelessly as I've done. You want to do this quite subtle, and it might take a bit of time to really find a balance, you know. Uh, so, let's get rid of this compressor, and let's open up the event editor. Oh, uh, sorry, let's open up the mixer. So, as you can see, I've got quite a few groups here. We're only going to be looking at two, the music and the gunfire, because that's what we're going to be affecting. Uh, as you can see, I've already added the music event and the handgun event to the music group and the gunfire group. So that's already done. So now we're just going to do the same thing we did last time. So we're going to go to the group uh, of music, because that's what we want to reduce in volume. We're going to add the compressor. 
Uh, and again, I'm going to set the settings really stupidly so we can clearly hear the effect. I'm going to put side chain on. Then I'm going to go to the gunfire group and I'm going to hit the plus and then I'm going to go add side chain and connect it to the compressor on the music group. Okay, like we did last time. So now let's listen to that effect. I'm going to open a couple of event editors. Uh, let's drag the thing back to there. Uh, and then we should hear the effect whenever I play the handgun sound. So let's have a listen. Cool, so there we go. Again, you can hear the same thing happening. Whenever the handgun um, is played, uh, the volume of the music reduces, which is perfect. So now we can use both these event events and reduce the volume of the music. Uh, so let's go file, save, and file build. So now it carries over to Unity. Let's jump into Unity and let's play it and see if we can hear a difference. There we go, cool. So as you can see, I've now been able to control the music so that the handgun is uh, clearer. Like I said earlier, this is a really extreme tutorial so you can hear the clear effects of the compression and the side chaining. You're gonna to wanna to do this very subtly and you wanna balance everything so the player doesn't notice that the music is dropping in volume dramatically so the gun can be heard. Um, a lot of you who have watched some of the other tutorials will probably know that this is the same scene I use for most of mine just because you know I've set it up and integrated with FMOD and it works. Um, but I've also got footsteps playing in this scene. However, you can't hear them because the music's really, really loud. And again, maybe that's something I'll probably want to consider if I was turning this into a game. You know, maybe I want the... I want both the music and the footsteps to be heard. Again, I'm not, I wouldn't compress it as I've done in this tutorial because then every time the player makes a step, the music would be reduced in volume dramatically and that's not what we want. You just want it balanced so that the, you know, the audio is heard a bit better. Um, so I think that's everything from this tutorial. Um, as always, please let me know if there's anything else you want to see. Um, I love hearing your guys' suggestions and tips and tricks because you know I'm, I'm quite new to YouTube and thankfully some people have let me know that you know ironically, that my audio is not very loud for people to hear, you know, um, which is funny because that's all I'm talking about, you know. <laughs> um, but hopefully, you know, I've done some changes and hopefully now everything's a bit more clearer and you can hear me better and you can hear the audio of the game. So as always, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.